I've got one that can see. Logic before authority. In this presentation, I will be dispelling lies and heavy delusional beliefs that have been falsely seated in the minds of the people of the world about events that have happened over the past 100 years and how those secrets, a.k.a. cover-ups, are playing a major role in the world around us to this day. Secret cover-ups, secret weapons, secret societies, and secret agendas of the Illuminati and the New World Order will be disclosed all throughout this presentation along with multiple facets of hard evidence, demonstrative evidence, circumstantial evidence, and historical video and photographic evidence. The preponderance of this evidence will bring multiple fantastic realities clearly into the light of truth for all to see for the first time. Sit back, open your mind, and you will discover what they have been lying to you about all along and some of the satanic occult secret plans for humanity as well as you will be able to see events happening around you today clearly for what they are for the first time in your life. In the 21st century, while one is actively in the search for truth, one must be willing to look where they cannot normally see right under the nose and cloaked in symbolism and veiled quite perfectly to the uninitiated observer. Right there to be seen, yet never seen. The observer of this video and the truths, decodes, and concepts presented within must be willing to toss out all preconceived ideas of what anything and or everything means and start anew. If unable or unwilling to do this, there is no need for you to continue any further into this presentation. For you have already accepted the provided version of reality interwoven into your mind from when you were just an innocent child. Quite similar to an empty hard drive on a computer, it, or rather you, knows absolutely nothing that has not been programmed into it by many nefarious outside influences, albeit some believing themselves to be of good intention. They too believe the untrue and deceptive delusional version of the reality that they presented to you as bona fide self-evident reality. So then, without questioning everything you think you know, about the perceived reality you believe you exist in, you will remain stuck in the matrix of Oz following the yellow brick road, seeking a fictitious savior until the clock runs out on your time, and chance to unravel the mirage of the corporal reality you find yourself in today. Our dive down the proverbial rabbit hole today starts with a look at a very important scene from a computer-animated dystopian view of our past, current, and future timelines, all planned and will be orchestrated, if successful, by the group of aforementioned self-named Illuminati. The specific scene in question is where Lily sits in the classroom, surrounded by 12 egg-headed classmates, symbolic of 12 stars and a crown, 12 months in a year, and or 12 numerals on a clock. In a twisted symbolic mirroring of Revelations 12, Lily sits in a pure white dress, holding Adam's seed, the apple, and a sad, defeated type of demeanor on her face. Lily has the moon under her feet and 12 classmates symbolically on her head. In the background, there is a buck deer in rut, which happens normally October 23rd to November 1st, charging forth, and a buck rabbit glaring towards the end of the year. All the other children in the classroom are bored and showing signs of sickness and currently having a loose snare of barbed wire symbolizing the coming kidnapping and trapping of the children in the schools. A blaring red exit door stands out symbolizing a short 
time still remains for escape from the impending release of the snare, imprisoning the children until they and their parents can prove that they are safe, aka jabbed, and can now go home. Yet now, never to reach their true father or true home. The apple drops at midnight and rolls across the Masonic chessboard floor, stopping by Obama's boot that sits atop a coin with a visible crown, from approximately 1520 minted on the order of King Henry VIII, 500 years ago, demonstrating power and planning across time and identifying the lineage of bloodline at play and still in power now. As well, Lily has a red rose behind her ear symbolizing the Tudor rose King Henry VII made famous by incorporating its design into coinage of the dynasty, again identifying lineage of bloodline. The apple splits and from a seed on each side join together and a lotus flower emerges and blooms. My theory starts out like this. I know that the symbolism of an apple dropping could be tied to Times Square in New York City and know that at least two clocks are depicted in iPad Go To and are on the 12 midnight position. As well, the last two classmates on the right side in the 11 and 12 o'clock positions have a small dent in the head and then a bigger dent in the head of the figure in the 12 o'clock or December position. Could these dents represent explosions possibly? However, for sure, these as a preponderance further confirms we might be looking at an explosion in Manhattan on a New Year's Eve, as well as possible others at other points in time, which I will speak to later. Other symbolism throughout I Pet Goat, such as the skeleton man depicted in the video, also wears a top hat and blows a gazoo while fireworks are exploding in the background. All three symbolize the moment of the new year ringing in at Times Square in New York City, bringing the total components of circumstantial evidence elements of interest to a total of at least seven, eight if you count the lights going out prior to the apple drop. Symbolizing the apple drop is at night, thereby disqualifying 12 noon as a possible 12 position on the clock. 9 when you account for the New York City pin in the map on the classroom wall to the left behind Bush and Obama. Additional elements will be identified as we continue our investigation. Moving now back to our central items of interest, the apple and the blooming lotus flower. I thought that if indeed the apple drop was representing an event in New York City on New Year's Eve, that if I looked closer at the apple and lotus as it may be possible uh, symbolism for the nuclear explosion. So I started digging further. What I found and continue to find was nothing short of shocking to behold. With continued research I found that the splitting of the apple has and is used to represent the splitting of the atom. Yet instead of just splitting the atom, scientists discovered that if they combined forcefully together the nucleuses of plutonium, that they could produce what is called the neutron bomb, where more energy is released with more damage yet less radioactive fallout due to the non-use of the fission of uranium to produce the ignition. Interestingly, in Switzerland, at a nuclear research facility, nine apples can be found surrounding the grounds of the facility, all different sizes carved out of all different types of stones. At the entrance of the facility, the largest apple can be found split in half, just like an iPad goat to. Just inside the doorway, the smallest apple can be found sitting on a pedestal. The pedestal has a hole drilled through it, and if you look through the hole, you will see the big apple split perfectly in half. Additionally, numerous books have been authored with the titles such as The Nuclear Apple and The Nuclear Apple and the Solar Orange, as well as the book series with a part titled Shot Apple II, a test of the teapot series, 5th of May 1955 which discusses an atmospheric nuclear detonation of the nuclear weapon. 
written about a series of nuclear tests during 1955. One specifically was called the Apple II test, part of the Operation Teapot series of the nuclear tests. Atomic Energy Commission's Nevada test site, I covered the story of Operation Q, a program to test the effects of an atomic blast upon the things we use in our everyday lives. Operation Q, the atomic test program of the Federal Civil Defense Administration, as seen by June Cowan, reporter. I had to see Operation Q through many eyes, not only my own, but as a reporter through the eyes of the average American man and woman. I arrived at Civil Defense Headquarters the day before the explosion was scheduled to take place and checked in at once with the official who was to brief me about the test. To give me a perspective of the entire layout, a member of the Civil Defense staff showed me a carefully prepared model of the site. The scope of the test and the detailed care with which it had been planned amazed me as I listened to the explanation. We begin with the question of shelter, for shelter might save our lives if we were far enough away from ground zero. If so, what kinds of shelter are effective? Several kinds are to be tested from elaborate industrial shelters to the box type shelter in the corner room of a basement. This type would give more room for a family, especially if it were necessary to remain there for several days. In this frame house without a basement, at the 4,700 foot line, we will test a bathroom shelter built of reinforced concrete. The entrance door and outside window covering are designed to resist blast. I asked about the possible loss of utilities and what this would mean to survivors. No electricity for running a home or an industrial plant. Loss of power may be one of our biggest problems after an attack. Power poles, power lines, pole transformers, and complete substations are to be tested by the Edison Institute. How will they withstand this blast? How long will it take to make repairs? How soon can service be re-established? These are things we hope to learn from the test. One complete transformer substation has been erected relatively close to the shot tower. A second substation and power lines have been placed at a much greater distance from the tower. Thinking about news during an atomic attack, I asked about radio towers. Two kinds are to be tested. One tower is self-supporting without guy wires. The other has supporting cables. Both types are very common. Nearby, a complete radio transmitter will actually broadcast from tape before the shot to be picked up by radios in the test houses. Both liquefied petroleum and natural gas facilities will be tested. Will the fittings and connections stand the test? Will there be fires? All equipment is installed and checked by technical experts from the LP Gas Association and the American Gas Association. An 18,000 gallon supply tank, partially filled with propane and complete with feed pipes. A weighing and storage house and delivery platform have been erected on the test site. I was anxious to learn all I could about the various types of houses to be tested. Five types are prepared for exposure to the blast and heat of this atomic explosion. First, a single-story frame rambler without basement built on a concrete slab. Second, a two-story masonry with basement constructed of brick backed with four-inch cinder blocks. Third, a house of eight-inch concrete blocks reinforced with steel. 
The fourth type is a single-story rambler made of precast lightweight concrete. Walls and roof panels were joined by welding steel lugs. The fifth at the 5,500-foot line is a redesigned house similar to one previously tested. This new design provides additional strength at a cost increase of approximately 10%. That's the real purpose of testing these houses, to find their weak points. Through the cooperation of the furniture and appliance industries, household furnishings were installed in the houses. Mannequin families supplied by private industry are to represent Mr. and Mrs. America. Interior home furnishings donated by industry are complete in every detail. I looked at the mannequins sitting about so indifferently. Naturally, I was very interested in preparations for the testing of textiles and synthetic fabrics. Rows of mannequins were set up in the open facing the blast. Each item of clothing and each color had been carefully selected to give much needed survival information. I was especially interested in the food test program. Canned and packaged foods are to be tested. As a mother and housewife, this appealed to me. I had several questions to ask. Would food in the average home be safe to eat after a blast? Food testing in Operation Q is planned to answer this and other vital questions. Some foods are to be tested in the house, stored in the usual way. Other foods, including fresh meats, butter, and similar perishables, are to be tested just below the level of the ground at three positions along the main test line. This will expose the food to high-intensity radiation without risking destruction of the containers. Test items include sterilized foods packaged in cartons, metal, and glass. All will be exposed according to plan to give us the most survival information. The night of the actual explosion, or rather early in the morning, came at last. On Media Hill, television equipment was ready to bring the test into homes from coast to coast. Reporters, commentators, military and civil defense observers all had a purpose, to study the results of this explosion. At a position a mile forward from Media Hill, the civil defense field exercise group had assembled with their equipment. A small group of civil defense volunteers were to occupy a trench relatively close to ground zero. On Media Hill, where I remain, there was hot coffee, last minute briefings, and more waiting. But it seemed no time at all before the loudspeaker warned, H minus one minute, put on your goggles. Observers without goggles must face away from the blast. On the silent desert, the test objects waited. H minus 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Another test name of interest was Tesla. So we now have a nuclear test named Apple II. Kind of reminds me of I Pet Goat II for some intelligent reason. When one looks at the Apple II atmospheric nuclear detonation test, this is what you see. A big round explosion similar to an apple with some spikes or thorns sticking out of it, which I found fascinating. An interesting side note is that this footage and all footage of prior nuclear testing was just released two years ago for the first time, including the Tsar Bomba test of the claimed largest nuclear test 
ever released as well by Russia around the same time. It's just the things that make you go, hmm. So now I continued further down the rabbit hole and took a look at how the weapons themselves are designed and where the plutonium and uranium comes from. And this is what I discovered. Nearly almost all plutonium and uranium comes from a single mine in the Congo of Africa. The area of the mine's location and the mine itself are called Shinkorlabwe, which when broken down I estimate to mean as follows. Shin, the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is considered to look like or represent a crown, corona, or fire, and is defined as meaning the eternal flame or that that contains eternal fire. Kolob is a term that is considered to translate to the place where God lives or the center of all creation. Way is a term that simply means the way. So then, altogether, one can see the possible intended meaning of the name Shin Kolobwe, the way to the eternal flame where God lives, which of course is just my best translation attempt to see the intent of the name. It is interesting to ponder about because in a way it's like saying that God lives in the fire or is the fire or possibly more appropriately God is the point of energy for all of existence. Once you understand what fire is, think transformation, creation, frequency, calories, light, the sun, Alternatively, it is recorded that the area of Shinkalabwe got its name from the name of a thorny fruit shaped like an apple, a type of fruit that when boiled retains the heat for an extended period of time, and if squeezed a period of time later, you will still get a burn from the juice of that thorny fruit. As a side note, all of the plutonium and uranium harvested from the mine in the beginning was shipped to Staten Island, New York, as part of the development of the nuclear weapon for the Manhattan Project. Okay, so we have a mine named after a thorny fruit that looks like an apple. And we have a nuclear aerial test that looks like a thorny fruit, kind of like an apple. And we have the iPad go to apple split, like an atom being split with a thorny looking flower on top. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Speaking of the thorny looking flower, the lotus flower, since we know the splitting of the apple is tied to nuclear, then the lotus flower may be tied too. So I took a look and here's what I found. If you have been around for a while on my channel, you will know that the Illuminati types of this world use Gematria, which was created based on 3D imagery, but more specifically the mathematical resonant equations of the Hebrew words and language that can be found in the toroidal energy field flow that surrounds the earth, you and me and everything in God's creation, and it is the eternal flame aforementioned. If we look at the resonant mathematical results for the words lotus flower, this is the resonant number assigned to that group of letters. Now let us look and see what has the same resonant vibratory number. September the 11th, Twin Towers, One World Order, 201 like event 201 and lastly and most interestingly New York nuked. The Kabbalist Satanists of the elites used this method and its high magic. They wrote the language of the world and thereby they control the resonant frequencies coming off the tongue of the high majority of humanity. The tongue is a sword according to biblical text. Think about it. Now let's look at the word apple and see how it resonates with our subject. America, snake, Donald, Baron, and finally Shin. So we are back to Shin, which is the word for eternal flame as I previously stated. 
Are you starting to see how this works yet? I'll show you a bit more later at the end of the video. Too much math or gematria tends to make people's heads hurt. Now after that bit of mind melting information, here is another clincher or clinchers. We are still speaking about the lotus flower and if it is related in any way to a nuclear explosion. Take a look at what the cross cut of a nuclear bomb looks like. That's right. It is an exact match for the lotus flower. Here are several other images showing what I am saying. Now to melt your mind a bit with pure evidential raw truth, take a look at this cross section of the toroidal field. Yep, lotus flower. The nuclear bomb is designed based off of God's design of life itself. The toroidal field design and energy flow. It's all starting to come together now, isn't it? Well, I promise you, you have not seen anything yet. By the end of this video, your current state of mind will be in awe of the level of eyes our beautiful creator has given me, the ability to be able to see and show you the truth. However, I will say it is you, my supporters, who give me the time by supporting my work to do the research and, and edit all this together so I can show it to the world. Okay, continuing on down the rabbit hole, we also see politicians using the lotus as a word connected with a nuclear explosion, as in this report where the deputy chief minister of Pakistan says, pressing the lotus button will mean a nuclear bomb will be dropped on Pakistan. The truth is getting plain to see at this point. Now let's back it up further. What is it that Obama is afraid of? He is looking at the apple split with the lotus blooming and he is clearly afraid. Well, let's hear it from Obama himself. The number one national security threat to the United States. Uh, I continue to be much more concerned when it comes to our security with the prospect of uh, a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan. Just the smallest amount of plutonium, about the size of an apple could kill and injure hundreds of thousands of innocent people. Terrorist networks such as Al-Qaeda have tried to acquire the material for a nuclear weapon and if they ever succeeded they would surely use it. Do you think Obama chose the word Apple on purpose or just by chance knowing what you know now? About the size of an apple. Of course he chose it because he knows the plan for New York City. How about Trump? Is he concerned about nuclear weapons? Here's an excerpt from a 1990 Playboy magazine interview. When I ask about what it would be like with him as president in the future, his first thought to discuss was nuclear war. Here are the quotes. Question. What would be some of President Trump's longer term views of the future? Answer. I think of the future, but I refuse to paint it. Anything can happen, but I often think of nuclear war. Question. Nuclear war? Answer. I've always thought about the issue of nuclear war. It's a very important element of my thought process. It's the ultimate, the ultimate catastrophe. The biggest problem this world has, and nobody's focusing on the nuts and bolts of it. It's a little like sickness. People don't believe they're going to get sick until they do. Nobody wants to talk about it. I believe the greatest of all stupidities is people's believing it will never happen because everybody knows how destructive it is. So nobody uses weapons. What bullshit. We have thousands of weapons pointed at us and nobody even knows if they're going to go in the right direction. They've never really been tested. These jerks in charge don't know how to paint a wall, and we're relying on them to shoot nuclear missiles to Moscow. What happens if they don't go there? What happens if our computer systems aren't working? Nobody knows if this equipment works, and I've, been, I've seen numerous reports lately stating that the probability is they don't work. It's a total mess. Okay, so this is 1990. 
26 years before Trump runs for president. And when asked about the future with him as president, again, he states, I often think of nuclear war. And then he says, I've always thought about the issue of nuclear war. It's a very important element in my thought process. And continues with, I believe the greatest of all stupidities is people's believing that it will never happen. Okay. It should be easy for anyone to see where all this is headed. However, I have yet to show you what I have discovered after most of these findings were found. It is going to clinch the story and seal the deal that I am 100% right about what I have been showing you for the last 30 minutes. But first, I have a few more pieces of the puzzle picture to reveal. So who is going to be the fall guy for this attack? Russia? Iran? North Korea? Some other terrorists living in caves? Or will they blame it on an internal anti-government group of middle-aged white men? Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. <laughs> Or maybe just a malfunction of an old, out-of-date firing system that mistakenly starts a war, kind of like Trump spoke about of in his Playboy interview. I honestly am not sure yet, but here is an image of Kim Jong-un standing next to what is said to be a nuclear device being compared to a soccer ball. Interesting what it looks like, isn't it? Kind of like that thorny fruit or apple look to it doesn't it? And here we have Putin giving Trump a soccer ball, which he says uh, will go to his son, Baron. Could this be a timeline signal that the event is far off in the future? Let's hope so, but I'm not so sure about that. The reset that is underway is now and over likely the next five or ten years. Okay, let's get back on track. As we have seen over the past decades, when the Illuminati have had a big play at hand, prior to the event they will run drills or live exercises. Operation Gotham Shield was held in New York City on April of 2017 and New, New Jersey in the following months as well. Numerous other drills and live exercises have been held as well. Currently, a full-scale live pandemic Exercise is being ran worldwide by most of the population believes it's real and has no clue as to what it is really about. The Chinese government was the first to know of this risk to the world. And that puts a special obligation to make sure that data, the data gets to our scientists, our professionals. This is not about retribution. This matters going forward. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here to get this right. 
we we need to get this right we we need I think that's not what he said this is an actual transcript from the whitehouse.gov website I'm gonna go down here and type in should have let us know and skip down to that in the actual page on whitehouse.gov and as you can see they recorded the conversation as we were in a live exercise here and also you should have you should have let us know but I digress now if we consider so far all the new information we now have at hand and the high level of potential to what it is pointing at we could already come to a conclusion however I felt I needed something that was a clincher and that would pull this investigation together conclusively and absolutely watertight and it's almost time to look at the final pieces of our hard evidence that will for sure sit you back in your chair with your hand over your mouth in all. Yet I do have one more amazing possibility I wanted to show you very quickly before we do that. Remember the Shin Kolabwe mine? I want you to see what the uranium looks like out of the mine as compared to another image you should be familiar with if you've been here on my channel for a while. Okay, here is the uranium. And here is the other imagery. Do you see it yet? I'm not saying this is absolute, but the resemblance is compelling. I just find it very interesting that the uranium close-up looks so close to what is said to be a microscopic view of the CV. You, you do realize that they believe that we are fools and could never, ever put a connection like this together. Mm. Well, no matter, because this next connection I'm now going to show you are absolutely mind-blowing. Okay, after making the connection with the apple and the Shinkalabwe mines, name and what its name means and where they got the name from, remember a thorny fruit resembling an apple? It made me ask myself, what kind of fruits would resemble a thorny apple? Maybe this, or this, or this? There are a few that could fit the bill, I thought. And I thought about the connections of the lotus flower and it resembling the design of a nuclear device. And both the apple and the lotus resembling the toroidal energy field of creation. So after all this discovery, I thought about it and said to myself, the last place to look for the final evidence to confirm my findings in my investigation should be to look at the ball or apple they drop in New York City each New Year's Eve for any indication that I am right. So, I did look, and here is what I found. I first went to the official website of the New York City New Year's Eve ball drop events called timesquareball.net, and there were lots of imagery in alleged history, videos, and a countdown clock. I found the countdown clock very interesting, but Mostly, I want to see the ball, a.k.a. the apple, up close. So I took a look at the press tab, and it offered high-resolution photos. So take a look at what the historical photos, to start with, of the ball look like. From the 1930s to the 2000s. And yes, in fact, it does have that thorny apple look to it don't it looks just like a thorny apple really well you haven't seen nothing yet this version of the ball AK apple was from New Year's of 1980 into 1981 according to the information directly from timesquareball.net and I quote in 1980, the aluminum ball was affixed with red light bulbs and a green stem to re resemble an apple. The New Year's ball was part of an I Love New York marketing campaign. 
For more, uh, for seven more years until 1988, people celebrated by watching the apple drop from the Times Tower. So the bo- apple ball set atop Times Square for eight years total. Eight is a very important number and is tied directly to this investigation. I have personally produced dozens of videos on 888 and many occult meanings and how it is tied to Trump and time. However, it is an offshoot and down a different rabbit hole, so we'll let that be for now. I will say eight is symbolism for the a large period of time as symbolized by the Ouroboros or what the whole or what this whole ritual was really about. The death of time, or the death of a time, and the birth of a new time. Okay, let's get back on track here. So we know what the old apples look like. So let's take a look at some of the newer ones. There is a miniature version of the apple as well, and here's an image of it. And as I zoom in, you will see what looks like a lotus flower cut into the glass. Hmm, very interesting, right? However, yes, yes, I hear what you're thinking. Not solid enough. I get it. Okay, so let's try again. Let's now take a look at the current Big Apple that is sitting atop Times Square right now. Will we find clear evidence of a thorny apple? Behold, the thorny apple. Revelations chapter 18 verse 10. Woe, woe to that great city, the mighty city of Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. I find it compelling and confusing that it is written biblically extensively about the fall and destruction of mystery Babylon. Yet it is the dark side itself pulling off and orchestrating the fall of Babylon. They are attempting to act as God and preempt God's word. We already know that they want to be gods. We already know that they possess high magic. What adulterated gall and superhuman ego it takes to preempt our own father's promises. May God smite them in the name of Yahushua with a full bowl of his righteous vengeance and hold them vicely accountable for their blasphemic sins upon our father's children. Now all who can see, now do see, that my investigation has demonstrated conclusive evidence that indeed they do intend to destroy New York City at midnight while an estimated two million people are celebrating and counting down the clock to their own death in New York City. The destruction of America and the fall of Mystery Babylon, all by 1.2 billion are watching live from around the world. This will be the climatic moment of the death of the old world, like the saying goes, ringing out the old and bringing in the new. World order, that is. This moment still is not the end because there is a scene in I Pet Goat 2 that shows many other lotus flower events taking place 
on many waters across the world. So knowing of this possibility, it makes me wonder, where else? And of course, the possibilities of where else are many. You know, I have my, at least in the United States, I have my suspects as to where, maybe else. Um, but I'm going to do that in a follow-up video. I've got one that can see. Logic before authority.